Hey everyone, welcome to Manny's Mic Locker. Uh, we're in Van Nuys, California. Who are you and where are we at? What's up, Manny? What's up, guys? My name is Greg Cortez and we are here at New Monkey Studio in Van Nuys, California. Hello, Greg. Can I come over and check out your mic locker? Hello? Yeah, come on in. All right. Well, speaking of that, we might as well talk about this. Yeah, so uh, this is actually a new addition to the studio. My partner, Joel Graves, used to play in a band called Everest. He goes on tour all the time, and whenever I come, come here randomly, he's coming back from tour, there's always just like random new pieces around the studio, and this is kind of one of the new pieces. Telephone mic here, it's got the new Monkey NMS emblazoned. Love on it. the uh, on the phone, and so this has gotten some kind of fun uses lately. Just last week, <clears throat> I used it as kind of like a three to four foot back mic on a 412 cab for some electric guitar. Got some really cool mid rangey snarly tones. Um, and then one of the uses I've liked recently is also just putting it on the floor, kind of like you would do with a bullet mic, on the floor next to the kick drum and the snare, and you kind of get this lo-fi <laughs> sound uh, through this guy. Uh, run it through some kind of compressor or distortion, like a Sans app, and get that extra or the, sound. Or a Fairchild that's right below this table right here. Run it through a Fairchild. You don't have to. Yeah. So next up, we have this D12. So this wasn't one of Elliot's mics, but we think that he definitely would have ended up getting one of these. And this gets a lot of use here. So this is the predecessor to the AKG D112. Uh, that looks a lot more modern. Um, this is a little, I feel like it's a little rounder and warmer, especially on the kick. I use this a lot as like the kick out. Uh, forget like that really pillowy 60s mm -hmm. sound. But some of the other uses that I found for this is like, it sounds great on like a bass cab, sounds great on a floor tom or any of the toms really. And then one of the newer uses that I personally found is for like a voice that, that sounds a little more like shrill on the high end or just like a higher timbre mm -hmm. you can smooth it out by using one of these and it just captures like a really low mid-range and basically any singer that's like i just wish i had a little more bass in my voice but you don't want the super hype sound of like an sm7 i feel like this is this is a good uh, alternative and um you know if you are, if you do get in the world of vintage mics at the end of every episode of manny's mic locker there'll be a message from my buddy cole and he specializes in rare and older dynamics like this. You know, when they get dropped, there's very tiny, like, hair thickness wires inside that break. He can fix them, repair them. And if you do get an old mic, like, mic like this, it's really good to send it to someone like Coles that can service it because there's foam inside that deteriorates. Mm -hmm. There's things that can fall on the, the front of the, the capsule they can clean off. So preserving your mics and doing small maintenance things like that can really have a huge factor in longevity and then making sure they sound good. All right, now that looks like something mysterious right there. What do we have here? Yeah, so this is an original Langevin CR3A. So this is actually from Elliot's collection. And through our mutual friend, Fritz Mashad, um, we found out that this is this was one of Elliot Smith's main vocal mics. He used to use wow. this a lot for vocals. I, I feel like I understand why, because I think Elliot's tone was probably a lot more chest and a lot darker and so this mic would probably pair well with that it brings out a lot of the top end mm -hmm. and probably makes it more audible in a mix but yeah and i love this mic it looks exactly like a neumann u89 but i'm assuming yeah i, I think know. they're owned by bach now and they're like mm -hmm. remaking them oh really uh -huh. i did not know that but i think like this this sounds a lot like a like a u87 mm -hmm. like a newer u87 it's a lot more hyped in the highs yeah. Um, so I use this a lot for like acoustic guitar, really, really pristine acoustic guitar, any strings they sound great on. Um, also, yeah, any, any vocals that I feel like can need, need more presence. Uh, also good for drum room mics. Well, there's just a regular XLR in the back. That means it would not need a power supply, just phantom power. So this mm -hmm. is definitely a beauty. And so next up, we have this D19. And so we have a few of these. These are kind of like, I feel like our secret weapons here. Um, these get used a ton, especially because, you know, we're, we have the heritage of, of being a more indie studio. So we do have like a drum set up to do a more modern sound, but mm -hmm. oftentimes we get asked for that more 60s sound, indie yeah. sound. So this gets used a ton. So the D19, it was kind of like the 57 before the 57. This would get used everywhere if you saw like, I think, uh, what's it, the Dick Clark show, you would see them all over the place. And so this sounds great. I love it on snares. I love it like as an over snare. Um, I love these on electric guitar amps, acoustic guitars. Yeah, I mean, these get these are a workhorse. They get used all the time. So Jeff Emmerich, um, 
he came down before he passed, like right before he was kind of doing like a, a book tour and he, he randomly kind of hit us up and came down, did an impromptu interview. And he, he told us that one of his uses for the D19 was that he said that Ringo used to hate the sound of like a direct snare drum. So what he would do is he would actually back up the mic probably about like past the crash symbol but pointed at the snare and I guess it would kind of be like a side overhead really if you're thinking about it. He said that he would he would record it like that and that's the sound that Ringo liked and you know one of the funny quips that he that he had about it was that he was saying that you know <clears throat> everyone asked him like how did you get the Beatles drum like how'd you get the tones and you know he was like I was just a working engineer like I'm just trying to survive he's like I'm just trying to survive not get fired from the gig so whatever they wanted is what I did but Good of course to live by. those are legendary tones right and and so half, the other half of that secret was that he was smashed into a Fairchild so all you need is a D19 and a Fairchild and you can get that tone. yeah just come to new monkey or you yeah. know you can use your Fairchild um, I really do love uh, this microphone and I, I know I blabbed about it before these are incredibly expensive now, between 900 and 1600 bucks to get one. A lot of times these are broken and not working, but if you're on a budget, the microphone that I have is called the D24, which is called the Frank Sinatra mic. It's the same as this mic, except for the different bulb on the top, but it's about half the price. And even half the price of that is a D119, like the, the D12 and then the D1112, or D112. Um, these mics, uh, you can get a D119, and even with this black tape, there's a little switch right there. Those are a few hundred bucks right now, so maybe at the, before this video comes out, I'm going to buy a few on eBay before you guys get them. Yeah. But um, they're really cool. Yeah, and I'll be right back. I know, huh? <laughs> what you're going to love about these is that you're not going to get another dynamic that's going to sound like these. I had to use these over drums, and I, had, I didn't really believe the hype, so I had a 57 and 58, and... Once I slammed it into a compressor, the 57, 58 were just kind of trashy, like to be expected. But this one had a sparkle in the, in the cymbals, and the drum sound uh, was first tier, and then the cymbals were second. So you got this thick snare, thick kick, even though the cymbals are right here. And then it was just, and you know, the technology that went into these microphones and, and making them. I just think it's hard for companies to, to recreate that. So if you can get one of these gems, you're going to have fun with it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. One last note on this guy is I think the best way I can describe it, like as a mono overhead or what it sounds like is the word papery. Mm -hmm. I feel like the way the snare hits and everything else hits, it just has that papery sound. I love it. So next up we have our Neumann U48. This is one of our vintage mics and this is from the Elliott collection. A U48A, this is serial number 470. So everybody knows the 47 and the 47 and the 48. They're essentially the same mic. The main difference is in the polar pattern. On the 47, you would do cardioid and omni. And then on a 48, it's cardioid and figure eight. The reason for that is because these guys, this is why they're coveted. So that's yeah. John Lennon singing into a 48. And so the reason why is because him and Paul would go back to back singing into a 48. And that would in, be on figure, in figure eight, eight. correct. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, these are great on everything. Um, this is probably the most used mic here. And you could totally record a whole record with one. Like, it sounds like yeah. sound. I hear about some of the engineers just roam around with one of those. And, yeah. You know, you yeah, I mean, so sounds sounds great on everything, especially vocals. Just has that really creamy mid-range that I think everyone thinks of when they think of, like, a professional sound. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, using it in figure eight mode is amazing. I love to... Uh, put it like on a on a guitar an acoustic guitar this mm -hmm. would be like the body of the guitar i put it to the side and do a mic on the bottom yeah i mean can't go wrong with this mic it's going to sound good no matter what you do with it and also that is a tube mic and it comes with the power supply which isn't here but they're definitely you know it's a deposit for a house now if you want one of these so you know after you make it make a good investment into one or you buy a house or buy a nice truck so make a decision okay what do we else we have over there yes and so this is the uh i'd say the other centerpiece of the elliott collection of mics here so this is a vintage u87 um here's the case here you can see that elliott smith on it mm -hmm. and so this mic you know it's it's a lot different than a modern 87 this has a, a way darker tone it has your your different polar patterns, you got Omni, Figure 8. And so this is definitely a studio workhorse. I'd say between this and my Mojave MA300, they probably get used the most as far as like, I'll maybe set them up as like a mono rooms and then once we're ready to flip into overdub time, 
it'll just get used for all those separate little overdubs. Um, only thing that I noticed with this particular mic, uh, and I don't know if it's like this with all the older vintage 87s, is that it seems to be like a lower impedance, so I have to pair it with the, with the proper preamp. I tend to pair it, we have a Neve 1272 here, and I pair it with that and it seems like it gives it enough headroom um, to do its thing, but I mean it sounds amazing, it gets used on vocals all the time, and, and you know in shootouts with the 48, depending upon the vocalist, some people actually prefer the 87. Well, the 87, um, some of my favorite records are, are ELO records, and those are engineered, like, next level. I've seen a video of how he likes to use 87s on everything, so if you happen to have 30 of them or 15, yeah, you can make an ELO record. But I, but I definitely think this is maybe... I mean, the first thing people talk about with vintage mics is, like, an 87, but I don't think people really know how important these were. I mean, Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden, that's what... Chris Cornell sang out of was 87s and it's some of the greatest vocals in the world so mm. says a lot about this mic it's definitely of all the Neumanns probably maybe one of the most affordable that you can buy mm -hmm. and also incredibly useful on classic records yes Thank and you. so so this 87 the 48 and then we have a Fairchild 670 and the Trident A range they've all lived together since uh, Les Studio in Quebec so they moved from Les Studio to, I believe it's Coach House Studio, uh, just north of Nashville. And then Elliot bought the whole package together, uh, I think in 98 or something Now, is that like where that? they made my favorite Rush records? That is. <clears throat> that is, God. yeah. I've seen pictures of that. So that console? Yes. Yep, so that, there's a photo of Getty with the console. I'm going to have to touch it. Neil Peart was yeah, man. touching this. I mean, that's, those are the most uh, moving pictures. And mm -hmm. the rec I remember seeing the back of moving pictures, and there was a shot of a window, and there was snow in the back. And I was just, before I recorded, I just was the thought of making a record in snow and, you know, being a band, like, being someone that can be in a band like Rush. So as a kid, I was always dreaming of that so it's really crazy that here i am looking at the actual console that rush used and that's a big oh, deal yeah. for me yeah we'll give you the photo there's a photo of getty with the console oh, uh, I, I think it's it. like a permanent ways promo oh i love it um and then yeah nashville uh, well we've kind of it's at least in the time era of um we know a bunch of michael bolton would have done on the console a bunch of amy mann and then from what i can see it looks like selena would have done i could fall in love on that console. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a Selena fan. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's a wrap on Manny's Mic Locker here at New Monkey. I do love the studio a lot. Um, hopefully soon there'll be a studio tour, a proper one. And I do appreciate uh, doing the Mic Locker with Manny. Thank you, Manny. If you're a new band or an artist and you want to come to California, Los Angeles, this studio definitely is a phone call away. You can ask for Greg Cortez and record your band with all these mics, Fairchild and Rush's console. So anyways, I'm over the moon. Thank you so much. And um, Dude, thank talk you. to you soon. Manny's Mic Locker, we're out. Hey guys, I'm Cole and I own a business called Colpix Vintage where I do repairs on ribbon and dynamic microphones. Manny asked me to come on and give just a quick pitch of my services. So if you need any help with any ribbons or dynamics, I work on a lot of AKG D12s, anything like that, any microphone that you need re-ribboned, I can help you out. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video of Manny's mic locker. I'm certainly pumped to check out all the videos. And yeah, again, if you need any help with any microphone repairs, I'm here to help. You can go to my website, colpixvintage.com.